All right. Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us for Cool Information Small Business Marketing 101 webinar. My name is Laura Ulrich, and I'm the Digital Media Specialist here. And I just wanted to kind of get started off with a show of hands. Uh, who watched the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 47? Show of hands just quick. All right, lots of you folks, which I assumed. I mean, you were part of millions of Americans who watched the Baltimore Ravens take on the San Francisco 49ers in 47 Super Bowl in New Orleans. And obviously, as you guys knew, know going into it, the big story was the fact that brothers locked horns during the game. You have Jim against his brother, um, John. And so that was sort of the big story. And they were both coming in undefeated, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, obviously the Ravens won, and the Beyonce did a great job during the halftime show, but that wasn't the real story. Uh, the real story was actually that there was 34 minutes of a blackout. And that's kind of when I, why I wanted to kickstart today's Small Business Marketing 101 webinar on how to engage your online consumers. Because there was one company who was awesome in the fact that they reached out to their, this online audience who was sort of engaged but kind of waiting around for stuff to happen and, you know, in between the commercials and the fact that they kept saying the blackout was going on and they didn't know why. And does anyone know who happened to have sort of that game-changing um, answer via Twitter, kind of ad via Twitter? Anybody? It was Oreos. This company is over 120 or over 100 years old, um, and they had the sensation. They had a slam dunk with the instant advertising era. That's what they're calling it, um, and it was the runaway winner. They had this legendary tweet that was really simple, and it uh, really kind of became viral. And it simply said, you can still dunk in the dark. And that's it. It was simple, surprising, topical. And it was retweeted more than 15,000 times in the first 14 hours. Now, this was, I don't know if this was an ad that they had that they had never used. Or maybe um, you know, one of their graphics people just noticed the blackout and simply created it. But this was brilliant. And, you know, Walgreens ended up doing um, some tweeting as well, as did Walmart and other companies. They kind of got on, on the bandwagon after that. But this was the slam dunk of all the millions of dollars of commercials, you know, the GoDaddy commercials and the Doritos commercials and the Snickers commercials. This one was the one that most people were talking about. And um, it was simple. It was topical, timely and really effective. And so, you know, that's kind of what we're talking about um, with today's Small Business Marketing 101 webinar. If you want to make a slam dunk, you're going to have to throw out the rule book in a way. And as a small business owner, you have actually more opportunity and more ability to kind of change things up or switch things up or, or do things on the fly. Um, because a lot of times there's only you or maybe um, one manager that you have to really kind of sell on the idea. So this is actually a great opportunity for you to capitalize on this online audience uh, and do some great things during um, some pretty big um, you know, events. And using hashtags gives you a great opportunity. And I noticed uh, during the Oscars as well that there were um, companies tweeting and using the hashtag and uh, you know, staying top of mind with that audience. So, According to a recent brain and company study that surveyed 3,000 consumers, they found that customers who engage with companies over social media spend 20% to 40% more money with these companies than other, than other customers do. And they also demonstrate a deeper, these folks um, demonstrate a deeper emotional commitment to the companies and on average 33 points higher um, as a matter of, of customer loyalty. So I just wanted to say that 
this isn't this shouldn't be your only uh, opportunity to reach out to customers. I mean, I think you should still, as we're going to talk about today, use the tried and true direct marketing tactics. Um, obviously, that cool information has, but in tandem or um, complementing some online stuff that you can do that's super easy, many times free. I think you're going to be able to um, have an opportunity to really kind of raise the bar or, or move the needle, so to speak, and you can really reach out to these transient, what I like to call them as transient consumers, who kind of make decisions on the fly based on you know, an email that they get or a tweet that they see or a Facebook update from one of their friends. So, you know, again, my name is Laura Ulrich, and um, just some session framework uh, before we get started here. Uh, we're going to talk about some the five ways I feel that you can reach online consumers, you know, these on-the-go folks. And then I'm going to provide some examples as, way, as well um, that are real life and they're easy to do. And then I'm going to follow it up with five action points that you can actually start on right now. So I just wanted to get some housekeeping items out of the way before we get started. We are recording today's session, so if you missed something, if you have to go early, um, that's okay. We'll send it out to you in about 24 hours. Uh, and then also, at the end of today's webinar, I will be uh, giving a $50 Amazon gift card away to one of the lucky attendees. So. Please, if you can, uh, I know that your time is limited, but if you can spend um, the 45 minutes to an hour, uh, I really encourage you to because I think you will get a lot out of today's um, webinar. A little background about our company. We've been around for 66 years. It started with a blue book, and now everything is online. You know, We provide uh, direct mail and telemarketing lead generation for businesses. Uh, that includes small business in general, but also uh, real estate agents and insurance agents. And if you haven't heard of Cole Community, that is C-O-L-E community.com. I encourage you to go out there uh, right now if you have the chance. We've got a marketing playbook for small business, for insurance agents, and also for real estate agents. And it gives you some really good uh, tip strategies and ideas to find new customers. Um, if you're interested in pay-per-click advertising, we've got some information on that and some resources. If you're interested in scripting ideas, we've got some information on that. Also, um, you know, check out our on-demand webinars, our other resources, and Buddy's blog. It gives you some good tips and strategies uh, if you're looking for new, innovative ways to reach out to your customer base and find some new customers. So. Um, you know, the first way, and I think that this Oreos example really demonstrates um, one of the ways to engage with consumers is visually. Don't spend your time on your Facebook page writing out um, this really glowing 2,000 word epitaph of what your company stands for. You know, choose a picture, make it relevant, and post it. And that's all you have to do. I mean, um, pictures are worth a thousand words, and there's a reason because that's what Facebook and Twitter um, is. It's all about showing pictures and being visual. I mean, Pinterest, for folks that are on Pinterest, that is a, a visual side, and it's, it's easy to see why. It's interesting. People don't even have to read anything. They just look and see, oh, that, that looks like I you know, what I'm looking for, or I'm interested in knowing more about that, and they don't have to read anything unless, you know, they need to, to know the instructions. So, you know, thinking visually, this is the first way to engage with your online consumers. You know, in our case, uh, our motto, our logo is helping business find new customers. So rather than telling people, hey, did you reach out to your birthday contacts, your birthday prospects this month? Why not just show them what we're doing as a company? You know, every month we have our own birthday celebration of our employees. And I just, you know, I take a picture of the cake before it's eaten and just post on uh, our Facebook page. I'm like, hey, uh, don't forget to reach out to your customers, your prospects, and let them know um, this is a great trigger opportunity, obviously, to, to reach out to people. And it, there's a reason. Everybody has a birthday. Um, everybody likes to, they might not like to age, but they like to have a day that's in their honor. So if you have the opportunity to know the customer's birthdays or you need customer birthdays, we've got that. So um, this is a great 
trigger um, way to reach out to customers. And so engaging vid vis uh, visually, I can't stress um, how important that is. Now, you know, here is Whole Foods, and Whole Foods is a national chain, and regardless of what you think of Whole Foods, um, they do a great job of kind of letting their local stores, this is an example of Omaha, Nebraska, but letting their local stores kind of uh, talk to consumers and the customers and really have those conversations that showcase the folks behind the store and highlight the local partners and the in-season produce. You know, at their national level, um, they'll have lifestyle conversations. But at the local level, they'll really highlight, you know, those employees who go above and beyond, um, you know, the pomegranates in special right now or the new products. And so I just noticed um, the other day that today only at the Omaha store, they had organic whole chicken for, you know, 50% off or whatever it says. And they got a, a bunch of, they, they just took a picture of, you know, their sign. And they got a bunch of people that responded that said, yes, I want that. I'm, I need to, to go in and grab that because it speaks for itself. Um, so again, the goal, according to the community team leader of their social media, um, is to create a virtual window into the stores through social media. So your customers shop with you for a reason. They like your product. They like you for a reason. Uh, how can you extend that? through with things other than just direct product pitches. You know, so don't just say, hey, we've got 50% off today. Why not show a customer who, you know, is using your product and say, wow, wouldn't you like that for 50% off? Or customer just bought this for 50% off. I mean, you know, think about unique ways to kind of um, move the needle or incite some interest visually. It's all about the connection, and anyone with a local footprint has the opportunity to make that local connection. And again, I think it goes back to kind of our mission, too. I mean, we always talk about uh, engaging locally and promoting the fact that you're local because that is an asset, especially to your um, business. Also, video. This is a great way to showcase, highlight what you're doing, um, especially for real estate agents. You know, you can engage consumers or people that are interested in, you know, your just listed, just sold list um, by sending them a link to a video of the home. You know, this is a uh, little less than uh, four minutes and 15 seconds, but it's a great video because it showcases the house. Uh, and it really allows people to kind of look and see what's going on with the house, what are the features and benefits of the house, you know, other than saying, oh, it's, you know, it's got 4,300 square feet and, you know, there's a walkout basement and a three-car garage or whatever it is and, and nice landscaping. So this allows, uh, with video, again, it's, it's engaging um, visually with your consumers and your prospects and allowing them to see what's going on without really um, at, their, at their discretion. And then again, as I mentioned before, Pinterest. I mean, this is a great visual social media outlet. Um, just from December 2012 alone, uh, according to Pew Research, women are five times more likely to use Pinterest as men. Okay, so, you know, think about your business as a, um, as a starting point. You know, who's making the decisions um, based on your product or service? Is it the man or is it the woman? If it's the woman, you, you should be on Pinterest. You should be following people who have a lot of followers and um, getting them to, to engage in some conversation with you, getting them to repin things onto their um, other friends' boards, um, it's because it's all about swapping information, and uh, as long as it goes back to a website of yours or whatever, that's a great opportunity. Their biggest uh, or most popular category uh, is food and drink. So if you've got uh, products related to food and drink, recipes, you know, I mean, how many times have people said, oh my gosh, I got that recipe from Pinterest, isn't it great? Um, that it accounts for 11% of their pins, followed by do-it-yourself, arts and crafts. So, you know, again, if you're a small business that's um, got some unique products or services that relate to do-it-yourself, or maybe like Real Simple Magazine, they show um, sort of a, a new use for old things, you know, 
think outside the box when it comes to um, being visually interesting and promoting your product or service without saying, buy my product or service. Uh, these are great ways, and they're all free. I have you know, said nothing that is worth um, costing any money at this point. Here is our Pinterest page. I don't know if any of you guys have gone out to there, but it's cool information, and you can find it from our Facebook page. Um, but the, it gives you these advanced uh, tab options that allows you to really do more within Facebook. As you can see, there's Instagram there, there's YouTube, uh, there's Pinterest, there's Twitter, there's if you want to do a coupon or you want to do some sort of giveaway, that sort of thing. There's lots of different things that you can do within the Facebook site itself um, that, again, they may cost you a little bit. I mean, advertising obviously costs you some money, and they've made some great strides with their advertising. Um, so I would just um, suggest setting a budget and trying it. Well, I mean, what do you have to lose, right? Um, except for a potential new customers. So again, visually, uh, engage with your customers visually. Don't write them a book. Engage visually. Okay, so that's the first way to engage uh, with your online consumers. The next way is uh, to be relevant. Okay, how many times have you reached out to a, to someone uh, talking about your product or service, only to be told, "Oh, you know what? I just bought that." Oh, I wish you would have contacted me, you know, three weeks earlier because I already, you know, went with someone else. Or, yeah, I was really interested and I forgot to call you. And then someone else just came um, and they were offering something similar, so I just went with them. You know, uh, it happens in insurance. It happens in real estate. It happens in home services. Uh, you know, oftentimes, you know, it comes down to money. Um, but sometimes it just comes down to uh, top of mind and the fact that they're, you know, kind of in the hurry. They need to do, get something done. And the easiest, most convenient way is, you know, the person who just, the last person to contact them. So, you know, we have products. Um, Cole X States, you know, has those trigger products and Cole Realty Resource and Cole Neighborhoods. Um, it allows you to really reach out and pinpoint those customers, the just listed, just sold folks, as well as the people whose X dates are up for renewal, their homeowner's insurance policy. So, I mean, utilize those triggers. But then beyond that, um, you know, take it a step further and reach out to them uh, and think about the time of year, the relevance. Um, and I just happened to find Davis Insurance Agency on um, Facebook. And they're located in North Carolina. So they're far, far away. And I engaged with um, the owner and asked, you know, some questions, and they never responded back to me, but um, I think that they do a great job with their Facebook page and also being relevant with their customers and also prospects. As you can see, they have 7,500 people who like their page. That's huge for an insurance agent, uh, insurance company. I mean, they're not Coca-Cola. They're not, you know, Walmart. They are an insurance agency, and that's the most I've ever seen of actually any insurance agency. Um, and as you can see, they have a weekly insurance tip email that they send out. And so as you can see, 400 people a couple weeks ago had signed up for useful information via email to protect their family's investments and more. And I'm not showing this to you that you can plagiarize it. Obviously, um, they used to actually, Davis Insurance Agency actually posted it on their Facebook page until they did start getting other insurance agents to plagiarize, and then they took it down. But um, you know, th this is something that you guys are subject matter experts in your field. So you need to be coming up, and you already know all this information because it's the questions that you get, these timely questions. You know, how what should I be doing to to get ready to sell my house? You know, when is a good time to sell my house? What you know? What about potholes during this time of the year? And how do I winterize my car? And what you know? Do I need snow? Um, you know, certain snow tires, what's the benefits of, you know, extra homeowner's insurance, et cetera. You guys know all these questions, um, but this is, you know, this is this person's particular way of doing this, and, um, you know, this, this insurance tip is how do I insure my personal belongings. So keep it relevant, time of year, frequently asked questions, weather events, life events. Um, I would keep just a list of questions that you receive, and that's how you can engage 
your online community. And then like they're doing, put it on your Facebook page. Um, ask people to sign up. Um, create an opt-in email file. Uh, you know, create a blog that has an RSS feed. Um, you know, all this stuff is, is pretty easy to do. If you have an IT person or if you just Google it, you can find all of this information for free um, on websites. I mean, you can start blogspot.com. You can start your own um, blog. So it's a free thing. And again, this stuff doesn't take a lot of time. Uh, it does take some time, but more importantly, you're, you're staying top of mind among um, folks that you know and um, also prospects. They see you as a subject matter expert. So, you know, like uh, Frank, um, who runs Citigroup Social Media, this is what he has to say. Focus on promoting what's next. Lead the way as opposed to what's following, as opposed to following. So, you know, I'm just giving you guys good ideas today about where what I think are, you know, critical things and critical ways that you guys can engage in people. Um, you know, if you've got your own ideas, do that. Try it. I mean, the worst thing that can happen is it doesn't work, so you just stop doing it. You know, I mean, what's the harm in that? Again, as a small business owner, you've got those ideas, you've got those opportunities to try something new, see if it works, stop doing it if it's not working. You know, you can easily change your budget uh, and reallocate your funds based on what's working and what's not. So that um, is just a couple examples. So we've talked about engaging visually and also having relative content to really um, talk to those online consumers. And now I'm going to also talk about being a good listener. And there's a lot of ways that you can do that uh, on social media. I also want to stress, too, that you have to be a good listener when, if you're a brick and mortar store. What are people coming in and asking you or telling you? Or what, what are they interested in? Those are cues that you either need to solve that problem, you need to be a subject matter expert. Um, it brings you back to you know, answering the question in the store and then making that into a blog post or whatever it is. Um, but there are so many ways to listen uh, personally, you know, engaging um, in the flesh with your consumers and your prospects, but also there's ways to do that online. And one easy, easy way, you don't even have to have a Twitter account to do this, is search.twitter.com, okay? So I actually went to, I'm going to show you, um, I went to Twitter, and I went to search.twitter.com, and you can see what's happening right now. So um, example that I kind of showed you earlier is house hunting. But I'm going to say Snow Kansas. See what comes up. All right. So Snow Kansas, it gives you all these people right now who um, are saying Snow and Kansas in their updates, which is a ton. And look at six hours. 10 minutes, 24 minutes. Um, so everything is very timely. So if you've got a Twitter account, you can easily um, follow these people. And I wouldn't follow these people and say, hey, um, I know that you, you know, let's say you're, uh, you're in home services and you are a snow removal company. I wouldn't follow them and just say, hey, I can help with your snow removal needs. But I would definitely follow them and provide updates that um, answer their questions. So, you know, um, snow is worthless unless school is canceled or you live somewhere that's not in a boring state like Iowa and Kansas. You know, maybe something like, hey, check out my cool picture. Um, and you don't even have to, you don't even have to tweet to this particular person, Brett. You can just tweet to your followers and just say, hey, check out this great picture of my, you know, of me snow blowing. Uh, one of my customers route. Um, there was another company, um, actually a city in uh, Ralston, Nebraska, it was on the news the other day, and they did something really cool with their snow plows. And what they did was um, they painted the inside of their snow plows like um, they painted a Snoopy and the gang, they painted like fire, um, and they also did, you know, these eyes. And so it's it drew, it, it's drawing a lot of attention to the fact that the news media, the 
excited to cover this story. Um, but also, you could post that on your, you know, on your Twitter feed or, again, visually update on your Facebook page if you're doing something interesting and a little off, off the beaten path um, that just shows that you have a personality. So again, I searched here, car broke down Omaha. And um, so these are the results that came back. So if, you know, if it's car insurance that you're looking, maybe you are a car repair service, I would follow these people and you know, not just tweet to them directly and, and try to upsell them a product, but just say, hey, you know, if you ever need help, uh, let me know. I can come and pick you up. Or if you ever need insurance, I can come do that. Or just, just being a good listener and seeing what their needs are. Uh, Google Alerts is another one, and I want to um, go out to that as well. You have to have a Gmail account, which is a Google um, email, and it's free, but you can search for anything. Um, and so you could put in there, like I have Google Alerts for Cole Information, I have Google Alerts for Jack Cole, I have Google Alerts for uh, all of our products. And so it just gives you... Um, it gives you daily emails based on those keywords um, that allow you to keep up with your competition. It allows you to keep up with your, what people are saying about your product. It just allows you to, to be a listener without having, it, it gives those results back to you without you having to go out and do all that work yourself. Again, free, all you have to do is have a Google um, email or a Gmail account is what it's called, and it's super easy to set up. And you know, Gmail is actually a great email account. Uh, it doesn't get hacked into or anything like that. So if you're having problems where your email account, like if you have a Yahoo account and um, you're constantly sending out spam messages, you might want to think about um, a, having a stronger email account and Gmail would be great for that. So, <clears throat> so being a good listener, that's a great way to really figure out what's going on in your industry, um, to know what those triggers are, um, and also keep kind of abreast of the conversation and what's going on. And so there's, you know, again, lots of industry triggers. Um, let's stop talking about interrupting these people. You know, um, for the longest time, ads were all about, you know, commercials on TV were all about an interruption of your favorite show. Uh, you know, when you were reading the paper, it was all about an interruption within um, that section of the newspaper. And now it's um, going to time of need. And again, I cannot stress enough that, you know, we've got products, whether you're insurance or real estate or home services, that based on that time of need, you can really reach out to customers who need your product um, and let them know. Uh, and when they're most uh, ready to be receptive of what you have to say to them. All right, so I want to talk about um, bridging the gap between sort of direct mail and um, uh, digital advertising. And so QR codes, I think, are still a great way to bridge that gap. When they're used properly, um, they are very effective. And there's some practical uses, an email address, additional information, a promotional video, a landing page, a coupon or registration, that kind of bridges the gap between your um, actual print piece uh, to getting like a free gift or signing up for something or whatever it is. And I gave you the how there. There's bit.ly, there's um, qr.net, there's all these great ways. And with your smartphone, they make it super easy. Uh, you can also do it on your desktop computer. So I'm not going to go into all those details, but that kind of gives you um, some practical uses for a QR code. We did it, um, this was one piece of direct mail that we did that uh, invited people to a webinar. And we had it on the front and the back. We gave some instructions about how you can register, um, how to, and it obviously went to uh, a video on the front, and then it went to the registration on the back. But it gave some details on how to use that QR code, because you know, if you read about QR codes, they haven't been very popular, but I just got back from Europe, and they're super huge there because um, that's really only, that's one easy way for these companies, uh, in London particularly, these little pubs, to really set themselves apart 
Because, I mean, if you're living in central London, you're not going to go way out in west London to go to the pub. You're going to go to the, the pub or have dinner where you're at, where you live, or where you work. So this gives people a great opportunity, QR codes. They use them all over the place there, um, as well as alerting people to their Twitter and their Facebook page um, to really kind of create that, um, create the consumers, engage online consumers. So, I mean, a lot of times these folks, they don't have a large advertising budget. They don't, um, you know, their, their customers are very transient, so it's really hard for them to kind of, unless they're, you know, the people work there or work in the area, to have, you know, sort of um, a loyal following. So that's how they're engaging these online consumers, and it's working for them. Here's an example of, you know, a flyer. If you guys are doing flyers, um, be it real estate, be it insurance, be it home services, add a QR code. You know, link it to your mobile website. Link it to that video. I just saw this this morning literally as I was walking into work. Um, we have Fred's Heating and Air, and this is an Omaha company. They're out working on our heating and air, you know, at, in our building. And I snapped this picture because it's a great, effective way. That's a huge QR code. Um, it works. I tried it. It goes directly to their website. And um, it's got an easy call to action. It says, check us out. I mean, it doesn't get any easier than that. So you know, try these things. Um, a local sign company can easily um, make that into a QR code sticker or a patch or whatever and put it on your vehicle. If you've got, you know, if, if you're a plumbing company, I would do that. Um, if there's a, you know, even better, create a uh, landing page and a call to action and a discount or a coupon um, and put it on there and say, you know, scan this to receive 10% off your next um, plumbing need or service. You know, something easy like that. So, you know, these are great ways um, to talk to people and, and engage these online consumers. And again, don't think that direct mail is dead. It is definitely not. I mean, more and more I talk to small business owners who are using direct mail and they're using it effectively. I also talk to graphic designers who are designing print materials, continue to design print materials, and say it is, you know, that's the bulk of their business. So it's not going away, um, and there's ways, ways that you can complement both digital advertising, you know, doing ads like on Facebook or maybe try, trying Twitter ads or maybe doing some pay-per-click stuff. And also this, um, you know, old school, for lack of a better word, uh, direct mail sort of um, traditional advertising to reach your audience. All right, so another way to articulate your value, and this goes back to what we've been talking about, is articulating that the fact that you're local, you're right up the street from these consumers, is a huge asset. So you live and work in the community, you understand the needs of your neighbors, and then you can harness that power. You're not like in a call center um, thousands of miles away. You're right there. And a lot of times people ask, they say, uh, you know, why do you guys still have landline? Why don't you have, you know, email addresses, and why don't you have um, cell phone numbers? And the reason for this is, uh, cell phone numbers are, it's considered, you know, privacy, um, and a lot of people have put their cell phones on the do not call because every time you get calls on your cell phone, you get charged for the minutes. And so that's, it's not free for all sort of thing. So it's this new market hyper locally um, sort of idea that I want to plant in your head. And we actually did try this, and it worked for us. What we did is we went to a trade show. And, um, you know, that's a traditional thing. As you can see from the picture, we set up a trade show. We, you know, we've got our quick screen. We've got our um, brochures. You know, we've got our uh, put your business card in for a chance to win something. You know, we've got our tablecloth and all that good stuff. But what we did during the show, and let's face it, this does take some time out of your day, is we took those emails during the show that the people had put into, um, you know, to win for a free, whatever it was that we handed out. And we emailed them the next day. And so this particular trade show that I'm talking about was uh, like a three-day trade show. You know, and so they only had a certain amount of time to come out and kind of have a break and then go back in. 
So we emailed them and we said, hey, you know, don't forget about checking us out at Coal uh, Realty Resource or Coal Estates, um, our table over there, because we've got this great opportunity. We've got this great show deal, this show special that's only available during the show. And we're not going to offer it any other time. And so it was, you know, as, as an extra percentage off or whatever. But that email to those people that we had captured their email addresses we, because we emailed them the next day as opposed to waiting like two or three weeks was a 29.7 on average uh, open rate and a 19.7 click-through rate. I mean, that is that's huge. And it um, actually was a really good... Uh, open rate and a really good click-through rate. And our call to action was to go to um, the booth and also to give our uh, customer care um, sales folks a call and um, buy the product. So that's, it wasn't so much, um, I mean, the click rate isn't super high, but we were asking people to give us a call rather than click on a link. So, you know, these are great opportunities. Now, I would caution you, there's a such a thing called a canned spam law. So you have to use a permission-based email marketing platform, and you have to keep your list up to date. Uh, when I say use a permission-based email marketing platform, there's um, companies out there called like MyEmma.com and uh, Create and Send that they keep track of the people who unsubscribe because uh, you have to be very um, careful about that. You don't just want to put everyone in your Outlook and forward everyone or do a blind copy. Uh, you really want to use these permission-based email marketing platforms um, because they are more secure. Uh, they can, people can easily opt out of your message. Because let's face it, not everyone wants to receive information. Or they did it that one time, and then they changed their mind. Um, and you don't want to get in trouble uh, because you are spamming them because it's, um, it, it could shut your website down if you do. Also, um, let's try something else here. What about, I mean, who doesn't get those living social daily deals or the Groupon every day or, um, you know, the daily deal in your city? Why not try to be a merchant? Um, this is living social. I downloaded the app onto uh, my smartphone, and I also pulled this up. Uh, but this is a great way to reach out to people. I mean, I have seen so many great ads, and they help you make them um, because they partner with you. But, you know, Living Social is asking or telling businesses to reach a new audience and create loyal customers. They partner. They handpick these merchants. They feature interesting deals. And you can, you know, provide a discount. I've seen lots of success with um, the food industry. Uh, there's retail that has done really well, and um, but but not only that, it builds awareness and it helps you kind of reach a new level of customers. Again, these online folks that maybe have never seen your ad in that lifestyle magazine that really the the age of 48 to 75, you know, women see that ad. You're able to reach out to the 25 year old folks, and ultimately you can make more money. So again, um, this was a, an email that I got the other day, and it says advanced floor care. Um, it's got a funny picture of a cat. I mean, we all know that animals have accidents, and um, you need your carpets cleaned. And sometimes a professional just does a better job than uh, the Resolve carpet cleaner that you bought at the store. So um, think about doing these things. Again, you can work with um, the, these companies and kind of set limits. Um, you can kind of see in your budget, like, you know, what kind of percentage can we actually ask off where we still kind of make somewhat of a profit, or can we stand to lose a profit um, but still get our name out, and that might work in our favor. So obviously you need to, you know, crunch the numbers and do some um, forecasting, uh, but think about doing these things. It might um, be to your benefit. Along those same lines, it's Foursquare. Um, you know, this is a location-based application, um, and lots of people use it to check in. I check in all the time. I'm the mayor currently of Coal Information. Um, but 
it creates more traffic, more sales, it fosters loyalty, you can offer um, percentages off or give people badges, and most people just do it for the heck of it, maybe just because they're bored. But um, there's other opportunities uh, to make more sales and, and again, um, drive traffic to, pe to your uh, establishment, especially if you're a brick and mortar store. Um, you know, like I gave an example right here of Scooters, it's a local coffee shop, and they make it work for them. They reward customers who check in, um, and it's super easy to do. I, don't, I think it's free, but you can go to foursquare.com, you can click on add a venue, you can choose a badges, you can um, add specials, and um, you can incentivize people. So to continue to come back. Uh, and, and use your product because again, there's a reason why people are coming to you to begin with. Um, you know, just amp that up a little bit and uh, try maybe a referral and get that the person who refers you. You get a they get a free cup of coffee, especially a cup of coffee or something. Also, you can drive online reviews via direct mail. This is actually a, a local company that um, they said. You can rate us, and you can, you can receive 10% off your next order. So offering a discount, as you can see, it's um, a postcard. Uh, make sure that you can track that response, obviously, so you can see you know, what's really moving the needle in terms of um, that. But this is a great idea to do that as well. And then also, um, again, these are these local reviews. You know, Google has local reviews and also um, Yahoo. You know, make sure that you have, you've updated your, your place, you've claimed your space, and um, make sure you, you let people know where that's at and how they can comment and maybe give them a, an incentive for doing it. And you can um, really get some traction off of that as well. Because especially with this hyper, again, back to hyper-local marketing, um, it's giving people, you know, via their smartphones, via GPS, they're searching for the Walmart, and it's, you know, bringing back the closest Walmart. Or they're searching for a local coffee shop, and it's your coffee shop that comes up, and you've got a special, and you've got all this, you know, social media, so you write to the top um, on, you know, Bing or Google or whatever it is, their search engine. So. Five action points. Uh, be consistent in your look and feel. You know, um, you've got a logo. You've got the uh, local or the national logo. Utilize that information. Utilize those brand standards. You know, if they say that we always use Arial font, use Arial font. It makes it simple. It's consistent, and everyone knows that it's the same company. Set up those Google alerts. It's free to do. You know, maybe go out to search.twitter.com, see what's going on in your area. You know, if you guys are maybe pushing auto or something, um, if you're insurance agents or you're looking for people who are looking for a two-story house, just do a quick search. It will bring you back results instantly, and then you can either you know follow up on those people or start following those people, or you can you know go back to what it was you were doing before. Create calls to action that are clear and concise. You know, if you want people to give you a call, say, give me a call. Um, determine relevance prior to posting. You know, is it interesting? Would I be interested in it? Is it visually stimulating? You know, is it somewhat controversial? You know, do I need to, is everything spelled correctly? And then finally, track to see what's working. Do more of that. You know, again, as a small business owner, you guys have the opportunity to really move the needle, do things differently if you so choose. 